Well, as you've heard, one of the overriding themes in Brazil right now is the push for progress. Earlier, I spoke to Dr. Joao Augusta de Castro Nieves, a former legislative aide in the Brazilian Senate, and now with the Eurasia Group. I asked him about the rapid pace of progress in Brazil. I mean, if you look at the last 20, even 30 years, you've seen a lot of changes in Brazil, starting with, the, with the political changes, a return to democracy, and then stabilization of the economy in the 90s, and finally, uh, social policies that worked in the, over the last 10 years. So I think the combination of these uh, processes, they kind of took us to where we are today, a, a more, much more visible Brazil in the international stage. Expanding trade, looking at these huge sporting events, trying to stage those, and then you, you've got that dual interest of, it seems like, the populace unhappy about things. Um, how do you, I guess, square these two, and should the government be listening more to the people, or, or is this the right thing for Brazil to be doing? I think the, the protests, you know, of course, they do uh, uh, increase tensions in Brazil, but I mean, for the political process, I think it's healthy. The fact that you have a population that doesn't resort to violence, uh, uh, these protests haven't, uh, you know, in the majority of cases, haven't led to violence, uh, but it does introduce a more competitive political environment, which means that the government it has no incentives now to become uh, complacent with, with big reforms. And, and there are hard choices out there because while investors are looking for more, asking for more credibility of the government, more fiscal austerity, the streets are asking for more spending. So I think that for, for leaders in Brazil, and not these only current leaders, but future leaders, to govern Brazil, it's going to be harder. Uh, you need to deliver more to this more demanding population with uh, potentially less resources. Cautionary tale, so to speak. But uh, talk to me about the last decade. Track that for me in terms of what have been the most uh, stark changes that you've seen. Well, I think building on, on previous uh, developments when it came to the economy and, 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 polit and the political system, uh, you've had a set of uh, uh, successful social policies that have basically uh, lowered, uh, diminished inequality in Brazil and increased wages and, and any social economic indicator that you see in Brazil today are much better than they were 10, 15, 20 years ago. So I think this, and when you look at the middle class, the middle class for the first time is the largest class in the country, over 50% of Brazil's population is middle class. So this is a very positive story, but also a much challenging one. Let me ask you this. The, uh, the new head of the World Trade Organization is from Brazil, and when he was appointed earlier this year, this is what he had to say. Let's listen. I have been working in and with this organization continuously for the last 15 years. I have seen it in much better days. I pledge to all members that I will work with them with unwavering and steadfast determination to restore the WTO to the role and preeminence it deserves and must have. What does the selection of Roberto Acevedo mean for Brazil in a broader sense? Well, I think w one first thing is that it shows that Brazil's uh, uh, diplomatic corp is a, is a very competent one. Uh, you do have a lot of people that do understand how the world functions. But I think more broadly, it is a challenge to, to restore multilateral trade negotiations, which doesn't depend only on Brazil, but on the developed world and on developing countries. So I think, so I think it's a big challenge, challenge ahead, given that the world faces a much more difficult economic environment. Dr. Nieves, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you.